it's been a little over a year since my Baldur's Gate 3 journey really kicked off, and I kind of wanted to look back on Baldur's Gate 3 a year down the road and think about its legacy, what it means to me, what it meant to my channel, the growth of my channel, will we be doing more Baldur's Gate 3 in the future? There's a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Um, so my journey began when it first went into early access. Um, I actually have videos published on my YouTube channel back when I only had like 86 followers I had published some videos and I dabbled in the early access a few times back then but it wasn't until June 29th I was checking the dates a little bit ago June 29th of 2023 so a little over a year ago that my foray into Baldur's Gate 3 really leapt off a cliff because they announced that they were moving up the release date by about a month and I rearranged my schedule, I stopped playing Diablo 4 and switched over to Early Access to start preparing for the launch of the game. And immediately uh, my channel sort of exploded. And we had a very good like six month run doing an initial playthrough that took about three and a half months and then some other partial playthroughs and guides and stuff that we did um, and the channel I would have to go back and look at the exact numbers but as I recall I know we did over 10,000 followers in the course of like three months which for me at the time was huge it was a huge growth for my channel um, and I went ahead and that was on the PC and then as soon as it came out on the Xbox I went ahead and picked up a copy for the Xbox Series X as well just because I wanted to be able to have it for the console and I wanted to be able to you know support the team because I think what Larian did was pretty amazing with uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I you know, I had to make a decision at some point. I know a lot of people have asked me why I didn't continue playing Baldur's Gate 3. And the reality is that my channel was always a variety channel before I started Baldur's Gate 3. And I've only, I'm always going to be in the variety camp. I like video games way too much to be stuck on one game and only one game. And that's sort of the risk you take when you're doing any sort of streaming or channel um, where you're doing content creation around it is it some things you do that you want to do you're not going to get a lot of traffic from and other things that you do um, you're going to get lots of traffic from and you have to choose which battles you're going to pursue. Um, I had a lot of fun through an initial playthrough and we got some multiplayer I think it's right here on the screen yeah some multiplayer from when we were doing multiplayer sessions uh, from last year. Uh, the game firmly established itself as my favorite CRPG of all time, knocking Baldur's Gate 2 off its perch after many, many, many years of Baldur's Gate 2 being like my go-to game when it came to um, the CRPGs that I've always known and loved. And there are some great games in that, you know, my top five, you know, things like Pillars of Eternity 2, Dragon Age Origins, Baldur's Gate 2, Baldur's Gate 3, you know, those are all games that are up there. And then if we want to branch out even further into RPGs, we could talk about Mass Effect 2. Um, lots of great games could go into those categories. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 is an interesting beast in that Larian is, you know, it was it was something where they came in and did a contract and it was a one and done. They decided not to do any DLC, um, which was surprising. Um, I don't know if they're going to be doing a follow-up to the game, or if it was one and done and that's it, or if they're going to do like Icewind Dale 3. Well, my hope would be that they, you know, they would be able to move on to do Icewind Dale 3 and build a, 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 you know, a legacy on top of that game as well. But I don't know if that's a realistic thing or just a pipe dream. It's just something that I have in the back of my mind of going, wouldn't it be cool? If, <laughs> um, but you know, be that as it may, it's like it's one of those things where wishful thinking is is what it is because they've announced that they're working on two. Larian's working on two RPGs right now. They opened another studio, I want to say in Warsaw, a couple of months back, um, and they have expanded significantly and they are running full speed ahead. If I had to guess, one of those projects is going to be the next Divinity game, and the other one is probably something licensed. If I had to guess, because I bet somebody was knocking their door down going hey we want to give you tons of money make us a Baldur's Gate 3 type success and I hope they can pull it off and I hope that it's I don't care what it is I'll play whatever Larian puts out and that's something that um one of the things I want to talk about with Baldur's Gate 3 is that for those of you who were here for the whole journey um I always talked about how I've always preferred real time with pause as opposed to turn based and Baldur's Gate 3 was the game that made me go I actually need to give pause or I need to give uh, turn based games more credit because it was a lot of fun and I didn't 
I remember when um, I made a video when uh, when Larry and got made the announcement that they were the company that was going to be doing Baldur's Gate 3. And they made some announcements at that po point in time, one of them being that the pack, the fact that they were going to be limiting the party to uh, four characters like we see here on the screen. And that was an initial thing for me where I went, oof, four people in the party. I need my six-person party system like we had in the original first two games. And the other thing that made me nervous was the fact that it was going to be turn-based. And so I had not yet played the Divinity of Original Sin 1 and 2 at that point in time when they made the announcement, but I quickly went and played those two games to see who the company was that was going to be making um, the next game in one of my favorite RPG franchises of all time. And I quickly found that the turn-based gameplay in the Divinity games was a lot of fun. And I kind of was like, all right, I'll, I'm willing to give it a shot. And then I played Baldur's Gate 3, and the turn-based gameplay was so damn good that I went, oh... I need to stop being such a whiny little bitch about turn-based gameplay and go back and play some other games that I missed. So I immediately turned around and went and, went and did like Wastelander 3, or Wasteland 3, I think it's called, um, which is turn-based, and had an absolute blast. Um, and I've since gone on to, you know, allow turn-based games into my life a little more frequently than I used to because um, Baldur's Gate 3, you know, put that love in me or at least that appreciation of it in me matter of fact i went back and when i first played uh when it came out um uh pathfinder wrath of the righteous i played real time with pause uh however i went back the other day and was looking at it and i did a video around it and i'm contemplating doing a short playthrough it won't be a full playthrough i've got some time in july and august and i might dabble some there and i looked at it and went oh they have the option to turn that into turn-based i want to play that in turn-based because the first time i did it i did it in real time with pause and i would much prefer to do it turn-based same thing with pillars of eternity 2 i went back and did a playthrough about a year ago and i did it on turn-based um maybe not a year ago it was like six eight months ago and i did a turn-based playthrough as opposed to a real time with pause because Baldur's gate 3 inspired me to do that What's really interesting to me is seeing how many people's channels exploded in the age of Baldur's Gate 3. Mine had, you know, for me it was significant growth. If I had to guess at the end of it over the course of like a year, I've probably somewhere in the ballpark of like 18,000 people have followed me because of Baldur's Gate 3. And for a channel with, um, you know, 30 plus thousand people, that means half of my audience um, have come from uh, Baldur, you know, 15 to 30, 15 to 18,000, somewhere in there. Um, if I had to guess, I would really need to go crunch the numbers. I know we did like 10,000 over the course of three months, but there was a lot of, you know, I still, to this day, some of my best um, performing videos on my YouTube channel are Baldur's Gate 3 videos that I made a year ago, which is pretty awesome. Quick commercial break, everyone, to celebrate and give thanks to all of these amazing people who keep me on the air full time. Really appreciate the support. All you got to do is join as a member. You get access to private videos. You can also do super thanks on any upload or super chats and stickers on any live stream or premiere you see. And beyond that, don't forget we're multi-streaming over on Twitch now, so you can support over there as well. Thanks so much to everybody. Let's get back to the video at hand. Um... And I know, I know, I saw Wolf Wolfheart's channel blew up because of Baldur's Gate 3, and he went hard and heavy on it, way more than I did. Mortissimal Gaming, I think, did a lot around Baldur's Gate 3. And then we, I've seen, you know, there's probably a dozen streamers whose faces I recognize, but names I don't, who sprung up as a result of Baldur's Gate 3. It just so, it kind of shows you the power that this game has had. Um, which leads me to, you know, I've I've had a lot of people ask, why didn't you ever finish your second playthrough? The first answer to that is. Um, because I wanted to play other games, and my channel has always been a variety channel. But also, I will always continue to do playthroughs as long as the audience is showing up. We were, I think, about... It was when the Xbox version came out, so it was like six months after launch or something. Um, and I noticed that there was a much... you know, It was a much smaller audience who were tuning in, and at some point it became evident that Baldur's Gate 3 fatigue had set in, and people were had gone off and were watching other things. And so it was a combination of... You know, my audience wanting to do other things and wanting to watch other things and me wanting to play other things and do other things. Um, I have no doubt that at some point in time I will come back and play Baldur's Gate 3 again. Um, especially if they decide to ever launch like uh, uh, an Ultimate Edition um, where they come out and have, you know, a bunch of stuff in it, additional features. If they ever decide to do some sort of Ultimate Edition, I will absolutely purchase that and play and do another playthrough all the way through. 
Um, it is the greatest CRPG I've ever played. Um, it would take an act of God, I think, uh, to knock it off its perch at this point. I mean, Baldur's Gate 2 was up there for 20 plus years. So, I mean, it's it's obviously technology is, you know, leaps and bounds right now. But but Larian Studios knocked it out of the park with Baldur's Gate 3. Um, it's firmly up there in my number one slot for, for now. And I foresee that being there for some time. And I can't wait to see whatever Larian has next after Baldur's Gate 3. I'm really, you know, as much as I can't wait to play their next Divinity game, I'm really hoping that whatever licensed product they're working on is, you know, Icewind Dale 3. It would be a dream come true to see that, uh, franchise get a reworking as well. But eh, be that as it may, um, I can't wait. This scene, by the way, when you're drawing the mustache on, <laughs> Ah, it's so much fun when you go into the get the Yankee, uh, into the into the crash. Um, draw a new face out of the portrait. What's the role? Oh, 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 oh! That's awesome. Oh, hang on. Did we? Yeah. Yep. Oh, we just got it. Just enough. Just enough to draw that face on the poster. Um. In any case, everybody, um, I do have an interest to do another playthrough. Um, it won't be happening anytime soon. Not in 2024. Um, there's way too many games we've already got on our plate right now. Well, because once August gets here, we've got Star Wars Outlaws, Stalker 2, Space Marine 2. We've got Indiana Jones coming up. We've got Avowed coming up. We've got uh, Dragon Age The Veil Guard coming up, all of which are going to consume me over the next six months of my channel and hopefully we see some good growth around those the channel has been slow and steady since Baldur's Gate 3 but I would like to think that Baldur's Gate 3 was the game that um, at least for me personally it took me from sort of you know eking out and slowly growing my channel and I had been monetized for a while before Baldur's Gate 3 came up but Baldur's Gate 3 was when I was able to transition into actually feeling like oh this is an actual viable career path it's it's I'm making enough money now on YouTube to support my wife and I and our cats and our homestead and obviously you know there's ups and downs throughout depending on whether or not we're playing new games or old games Baldur's Gate 3 remains the biggest thing I've done on my channel to date who knows when I'll find something to eclipse that but in the meantime we've got lots of other games to play and I appreciate those of you who have stuck around for the long haul behind beyond Baldur's Gate 3 for everything that comes next for my channel and my journey. Um, I am firmly into the second and a half. I'm, I'm halfway through to my third year anniversary as a full-time content creator. So I'm two and a half years in into this journey. And I'm really excited to see what the, le what the rest of 2024 brings because we've got a lot of great games to play. And of course, at some point next year, we might get around to a Baldur's Gate um, three replay you never know in the meantime like subscribe hit the bell icon if you haven't already done so daily streams here and on twitch i would love to hear about your legacy with Baldur's gate 3 what are your thoughts a year on how many playthroughs have you done how many hours have you got at the game what's your favorite class anything you'd like to let me know in the comments below let's talk Baldur's gate 3 everybody i'll see you in the next one